In this clip, we, we're gonna discuss another important class of uh, random variables, which is called geometric random variables. It appears a lot in our analysis of algorithms. So we'll start with some example. Okay, so um, suppose we have a fair coin, and we toss a fair coin until we get a hit. Okay, so in the exercise, we have already discussed this. I hope you remember. If you don't, please go back to look at the exercise. Okay, um, so x be the number of time we flip, we have to flip the coins. What's the probability that you get x equals one? So. Okay, so so let's try to figure out. So if what is the probability that x equals one? So you have to flip the coin once and you get a head, right? So that's happened with probability one half, right? So what if x equals two? So you have to flip the coin once, and you keep continue, right? So the first coin must be tail, right? And then you get a head. So that's two times. So what's the prob what the case when you have to flip the coin three times? So you have to get a tail, a tail, and then you get a head here, right? So um, this is, and, and four times, what's the four, four times? So you have to get tail, 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 and head, right? So this happens with probably one, one fourth, right? So it's one eighth, and this is like oh, basically one half to the fourth, right? So basically, uh, from this uh, in analysis, we can do the proof by induction, or we can you know, think about it, and we get that this is exactly 1 over 2 to the i, okay? So that's the probably uh, the number of times we have to flip the coins, okay? And uh, we, ha I, I would like to uh, mention further that probably that x equals 0 is 0, right? We, we're not going to, we have to flip something, okay? All right. And look at another example. So we have we have a key for a particular lock. However, we we keep the correct key with other k minus one key. So you have a bag full of keys, but but only one is correct. So there are k keys. Okay. So you want to unlock the door, and you pick a random key and you you try it. Okay. And you pick a random key with replacement. So what's the expected number of trial that you have to do? Okay. So this this number of try, not the expectation. This number of try is is the random variables, right? It's called y. So we are interested in the value, the expected value of y. Okay. Um, these two examples uh, mention a kind of experiment. Which is which is like you are performing iteratively a set of uh, a sequence of independent trial, and then for each trial you have some success probabilities. Okay, so so you have independent trial, and each of them has success probability p, right? And you keep performing. Okay, try it, fail, try it, fail, try it, fail, try it, success then you stop at this point okay and you count how many tri trials that you have to perform so it has to be one two three four so in this case the expect uh, the random row is four so a random variable x which represents the number of trials until we get a success okay it's called geometric random variable with parameter p okay so we will see pretty soon why we call it a geometric random variable. But um, uh, note that we only have one parameter associated with it. It's the parameter p. Okay. Let's look at come back and look at the previous example. So in the coin toss experiment, uh, the number of coin tosses is the, a ge geometric random variable with parameter p. What is the value of p? Right. So we perform independent trials, and we we are successful that is we get ahead with what's the probability that we get ahead it's going to be uh, one half right so that's the parameter of the geometric random variables for the lock experiment okay so we have k keys and one of them is is correct right so we keep keep on drawing keys out with the placement 
So what's the probability that we, we, we are successful? So it's one key out of k keys. So the parameter p is one over k. Okay, so, um, all right. Um, and note that if we did this without replacement, then it is not a geometric random variable because each trial is, is not independent and the probability of success change over time. All right, so let's think about the, the distribution and expectation of the geometric random variables. So the variance, we, we're going to analyze it pretty soon, so not today. Okay. All right, so the distribution of the geometric random variables with parameter p is, what is it? Um, so if you have to do it one time, then it has to be successful right away, right? So this happens with prob probability p. But if you have to do it two times, then the first time you have to fail, and the second time you have to be successful, right? So you have to fail once, so that happens with 1 over p. And the second time you have to be successful, so it's p. Note that uh, this is true because the trial are independent, okay? And here, what's the value? Have, if you have to do it three times, then it's going to look like this. And you have to fail twice. Right, and the last time you have to be successful. And let's do it one more time. So what if we have this to be four? If you have to perform four trials, then you have to fail on the first three trials. And then the last time you have to be successful. From this, we can derive that uh, the probability of x being one is that you have to fail being i, sorry, in the first i minus one times. And the last time you have to be successful. So this is the distribution of the, the PMF of the random variable, geometric random variable X with parameter P. Okay. So what's the expectation? Uh, if we have, think about it. If we have, say, a one half chance of flipping ahead. So what do you expect to, to toss? The, what's the number of coin toss that you expect? to do. So it's two times, right? So that's pretty natural. And if you have one third, one third chance of being successful, you have to do that for three times. So um, if you don't want to do any calculation, then our natural belief is correct. So if you have the success probability P, right? This is less than one, right? So the expected value of uh, being successful is one, one over P. But we're going to prove it, okay? We can do the direct analysis by uh, going back to def the definition of random variables. Okay, so it gonna takes on va various value, right? So the value that can takes on is one, up to infinity, right? It can go on and on if you fail, keep failing, right? And this uh, for so it's gonna be i times probability that x equals i. Okay, and from our previous discussion. We know that this is 1 to the infinity, i times 1 minus p to the i minus 1 times p. Right. And you can try to solve this. It is not that hard, but it's not obvious how to do it. Okay, we'll do that in the practice soon. So uh, if you keep doing that, you end up saying that this is in the end 1 over p. Okay. We we're gonna do some something different here, okay? So we're gonna use another form of expectation, okay? Um, so that you prove as well in the exercise. So for a non-negative discrete random, it has to be non-negative, okay? And has to be uh, integer random variables as well. So the expected value of x is instead of just so the messy part i is gone here. So I'm going to say it's, it's zero, uh, no, sorry, from one to infinity. Okay, the probability that x is at least i. Okay, so the messy part, so the, the usual definition is this, right? For every value of i, i is time probability that x equals i. Okay, so this part is gone. Okay, 
However, this is not equal anymore. It's greater than or equal. Right? You you're gonna prove it in the exercise. Okay. But but right now let's let's use it. Okay. So we're gonna use this form to compute the expected value of uh, geometric random variable x. So expected value of x is the sum of from i equals one to infinity of the probability that x is at least i. Okay, so what's the probability that x being at least i? Okay, so let's take a side note here. So what's the probability that x is at least i? Okay, so uh, let's say, let's think about it. So if i is 1, then uh okay it's it's one right if i is two then it means that the first time you have to fail right so after that whatever you did is okay you get at least two okay so what's what's the case when i x is at least three so you have to fail the first two times right and after that whatever you do this is true okay x is greater than uh three for four, you have to fail the first three times, and then whatever happens, it's okay. Right. So what's the probability that x is greater than i? So it's basically you have to fail for i minus one time, right? So you fail with probability one minus p. You fail for i minus one times. So it's this, this. So this sum will become i equals one to infinity. The prob this probability is one minus p to the i minus one, and now it's it's pretty close to the uh, geometric series that we have discussed before, and we can make it exactly the the uh, geometric series by changing the the variables. So we decrease i by one. So let's say be becomes i minus one. So we can change the variables. So we i is 1, so j is 0, right, to infinity, and this is 1 minus p to j, okay? So it's basically the ge ge geometric uh, sum, and recall that, uh, so the geometric sum is 0 plus a1 plus, and so on, up to infinity is uh, is 1, mi 1 over 1 minus a, if a is less than 1. Okay, so if p is is, is non-zero, is this one minus p is less than one, so it's uh, the solution is this. So this is uh, one over one minus one minus p, and this is exactly what we want, one over p. Okay, so we have used this fact. Okay, that uh, in discrete math, I think you you have you prove it. Okay. All right, so that's the expected value of the geometric random variables. For the variance, we'll come back later. Thank you.